Dear God, thank you so much for giving me life, Hashem. Thank you so much for allowing me to come back to this world to correct what I need to correct. Thank you so much, Hashem, for protecting me throughout my life, yo. Like King Ahasuerus did, he had a book of chronicles. Write a book, write a diary of all the times that Hashem either saved you, made a miracle for you, or changed your situation for the better. Or things that looked horrible, that in the end were the best things that ever happened. You know, yesterday I was talking to somebody, and they're very rude and arrogant. And in the middle, when I was talking to them, they walked away from me and slammed the door and just left. Like that with no regard, like just like you're a piece of trash. They just walk away from you. I had a rabbi one time do that for me. And so yesterday when this happened, when he walked away, I looked at my mom and I was like, you know her because it's somebody I care about. So you know what my mother told me? The best line. He did you a favor. That's what she said. He did you a favor. You don't want to be associated with somebody like that. Trust me. I remember when I was a kid, there was somebody that owed me like 20 bucks and I was ready to fight this guy. I was a tough kid, you know? Big ego. It's all about respect. You're going to respect me. It had nothing to do with God. I didn't know nothing about God back then. I was a little kid. This kid owed me 20 bucks. So I remember I was ready to hurt this kid for these 20 bucks. So my mother one day came to me. She said to me, why are you so upset about this 20 bucks? Think about it like this. For 20 bucks, you just got this guy out of your life for eternity. Imagine... If you wanted to get rid of this guy for eternity, right? You never want to see his face again. And God told you, here, give me 20 bucks and I'll make sure you never see him again. Would you give God the 20 bucks? For sure, yeah. Here's your perfect, let him keep the 20 bucks and walk. You just got rid of him. It's for your own benefit. It's their loss, you understand? This is how you have to deal with the wicked people, yo. That's how you have to deal with the wicked people. That's why Hashem says, do not trust in man. Those who have trust in man, Hashem does not like him. Hashem is turned off by somebody who puts their trust in man. Neither the strength of a horse or the fighting of a man in war can compare to being backed by the God of the universe. You understand? There's some guys who walk around tell you, Kanye West told you to your face he's a God. Charlemagne the God. Kind of a clown world is this, yo? Just the fact that you can even use the word God in your name tells me that you're gonna get smashed with the hammer from heaven. Yeah, he'll leave you here for 60 years. He'll use you to bury your grave deep with your tongue. And then in the end, you're gonna get punished for the whole world to see. What do you think? You think you're gonna get away with your crimes? (laughs) It's like forensic files. What do you think you're gonna do, bro? You're gonna wash your hands. You're gonna clean... The house would bleed. Whatever you do, you're going to get exposed. The imprint was there. The only way to get rid of all the evidence is to admit the crime. That's how you do it. That's how you do it. And I just want to say, man, this just came to my head out of nowhere. Noach matzachen be'enei Hashem. Noach found favor in the eyes of God. You know how he found favor in the eyes of God? Because he was Noach. Take the word Noach, Nun Chet, flip the letters, it spells Chen, favor. There's a direct correlation between the word Noach and finding favor in the eyes of God. Because when you're Ben Noach, you're humble. When you're Ben Noach, you trust God. When you're Ben Noach, you're at peace with yourself. My mother right now, in her older years, is going through a small sickness that's a little bit troubling for her. <clears throat> I just walked in the bedroom to check on her and she was just sitting down. Relaxing, And I looked at her and I said, Mommy, look at how God blesses you. You're Ben Noach. Even with your situation, you're Ben Noach. And it's a beautiful thing to see. Beautiful. That's the power of Hashem. He gave the sickness and He could take the sickness away. Don't ever forget that. Don't ever forget that. Yeah, sometimes He'll need to send you to a doctor as a messenger to heal you. But the truth is, if you get really stuck to him, he doesn't need to send you to a doctor. He'll personally come and make that call. He'll take that call. He'll make that visit himself. He's not interested in killing his children. He says that clearly in the prophets. I want that you should live. Turn from your wicked ways and live. The minute you turn from your wicked ways, you will live. Now I'm going to tell you a beautiful story that touches my heart. 
because it's so simple but so deep. The Gemara clearly says that a leader should never seat himself above the congregation. So like, you know, when you go into these synagogues today, you walk in, the bimah's up high, the rabbi's all the way up, the people on the board are all the way up, and the congregation is all the way low, not allowed, according to the Torah, not even close to being allowed. Why? I tell you with a story. There was this student, he was a super duper mega colossal genius. And his rabbi got a call that they're looking for a new rabbi in this new community and they want to interview him. So he sent this young rabbi. He said, go, you'll get this job. You'll be, forget about it, bro. You'll be in heaven with this job. So he went and what they did was when they interviewed him, they seated him up on a stage and they sat below him and they proceeded to ask him like really tough questions to test his knowledge. They asked him what happens in you, boom, when the girl doesn't have any hands, how does she untie the shoe? The answer is with her, with her, her mouth, she does it. Crazy. Another one with Sota, where she's, where he's, where, where, um, sorry, with you, boom, with the spit. If it has blood on it, is it still constituted as correct? The answer is yes, if it still has saliva in it. So they asked him all these like kind of tricky questions and he knew all the answers, but here in the interview, he was stumped. He didn't know. He froze. It's like he became dumb. And after the interview was over, they sent him back to the rabbi. They called the rabbi. They said, what is this guy? You're telling us he's a colossal, mega genius. This guy doesn't even know anything. What are you talking about, bro? So the rabbi was confused. He said, I don't know what's going on. Let me talk to him and I'll call you back. So the rabbi arrives. The young rabbi arrives. So his rabbi looks at him and says, what happened? He said, I don't know. He said, I froze. I became dumb. It's like Hashem did something to me where I couldn't answer the question. So the rabbi was confused. So he looked at him, he said, let me ask you a question. When they interviewed you, were you seated above them? Did they like maybe put you on a stage and they were sitting below you? He goes, yes. He goes, that's why you forgot. That's why. That's how serious Hashem takes ego. You don't get it, bro. You don't get it. You just say, I go to work. I make the money. That's it. Hashem will make you a million dollars. And then he's going to take it all away from you to show you who really makes the money. That's how Hashem does it, bait car. I keep saying it, yo. He baits you into the sin with the Satan. That's what he does because he wants to see who's really real. Those who are really real, you could come and try to bait them all day with a bait car. They'll never take the bait, ever. Because they know there's a God watching. They know it's too easy, too good to be true. It's like I told you, bro, if you want to go see naked women, God forbid, on a computer, all you have to do is t type in five, six words. That's it. You have every woman in the world naked in front of you, God forbid, to do any sin you want. Why is it so easy? Bait car. You don't get it? They baiting you to sin. It's gangster how it works. If you're clever, I told you in my last talk, it's a spiritual war. It's an angel and a demon fighting to the death. And who's going to win and take your soul? And the way they fight all dependent on how you behave when you're close to God the angel will decapitate the demon take his head put it in a box and send it in the river but if you're horrible stuck to the devil all day then the opposite will happen you understand it's all depending on how you behave just like with the Jews and the Arabs and the Palestinians yo when do they have power when we're far away from God when do they have no power when we're stuck to God. And not only that, they come and murder our families and our people, yelling it in the name of God. It's like Hashem is trying to show you, bro. Why do you think they kill in the name? Nobody would kill in the name of God like that. They kill in the name of God because Hashem is giving you a message. This disgusting pig is going to yell, Allahu Akbar, when he kills a Jew. There's a reason he's yelling that Hashem wants you to hear his name to remind you to wake up. And I'm going to tell you something right now that should make you so happy in your heart for eternity. If it bothers you with all these Palestinians, you know, Kurds constantly cursing Israel, Iran, death to Israel, all the attacks they do, all the fake news, all of it. If it really bothers you and you're wondering if there's really going to be justice in the end, let me give you a secret. There's a verse in the Torah, it's written twice, one by Bilam said it, one by Yitzchak said it. And it's those who curse you will be cursed, and those who bless you will be blessed. That's how Yitzchak said it. Bilam said it the reverse, because he wanted the curse to be the last thing out of his mouth. 
That's how the wicked does it. They're always attached to demons, you understand? Even though he said himself, I want my end to be like Jacob. That's what he said. I want my end to be like him. Like Israel. In peace under the shade of modesty. Of the symbol of truth and justice for eternity. Nobody in the universe can compare to Hashem. I told you, I have men in this Lord Disick. Are you? Yo, bro. Really? Like, you're you're lucky that an angel from heaven doesn't come down and smack you in the face when you call yourself a lord. Don't ever do that, yo. I don't care. I don't care. Even my right eye doesn't even look good. Even if you say, oh, no, no, it's not a problem. That's how they speak in England. No, bro. Don't use that term. That term is set aside for God, the master, the creator. Every creation has a creator. Don't you forget it. Now let's get back. So you see Iran. Look at this is how this is Baycar, bro. Check it. Watch. I'm gonna show you so dope. How Hashem is baiting Iran into a nuclear holocaust to murder them. Watch. So they're gonna yell out death to Israel. They're gonna constantly make fun of Israel. They're gonna constantly put down the Jewish nation. They're gonna try to bully us. They're gonna harass us. They're gonna th- send threats. We're gonna kill your mother. We're gonna rape your daughter. This is what how they talk about Israel. And you think they're gonna get away with that? If God in the Torah says those who curse you will be cursed, what does that tell you about Iran? That they're gonna be cursed for eternity. What does it tell you about the Palestinians? They're gonna be cursed for eternity. No matter how many people they kill, in the end they're gonna be cursed. Don't you get it, bro? I know you get it. And I know Hashem is running the show. That's why I always tell you, put your ego low. Let it go. And know that God is running the show, bro. You should put that in every elementary school, right over the top of the school, that when they come in, that's what the kids see. Put your ego low. Let it go. And know that God is running the show, bro. I actually can't say bro because then the girls are going to complain. <laughs> you know, when I was a young teacher, not even a young teacher, I would say like 10 years ago, I had a class and it was my first time teaching at the school. It was like my first day. So I noticed when the kids went to the water fountain, you know, the guys and the girls, they all ran to the water fountain and the guys would like push the girls out of the way. I seen it in other classes, yo. I said, I want to see if they do it in my class, and they did. So right away, I called everybody, and I told them we have a new rule in the school. So the kids are like, what's the rule? What's the rule, coach? I said, the rule is girls first. From now on, after class, when we go to the water fountain, it's always girls first. So right away, the boys got up. Ah, you're favoring the girls. You don't care for us, coach. I said, the opposite. I care for you more than you'll ever know, because it's a sin when you push Hana out of the way to go drink. So I'm protecting you from the Satan that's laying a trap for you. You understand? I love you. That's really the truth. And to the girls, I protect them. And one girl got up and said, oh, you don't think we're strong enough? I said, nah, it's not that I don't think you're strong enough. You personally, I know you're strong enough. But it's not about you. It's about all the women. And usually the men have more physical power. Yeah, the women, you could say, are spiritually smarter. No problem. But physically, they'll push you out of the way and drink. So to protect you, I instituted a rule. And that rule is girls first. And you know, it took a little bit, maybe a week for the boys to get used to it. But once they did, I see all I had to do was show them that you never lose when you do the word of God. That's all I had to do. And I did it. And once I did that, that was it. That was it. Now, I remember one time I wasn't in school and I had a sub. And I came the next thing. She left me a note. She said, I'm very impressed with the girl's first thing that you do with the water fountain. Something like that she wrote me. <laughs> you understand? That means when I wasn't there, they were still yelling girls first. That's dope. I remember even after I left the school, one of the kids was like, yo, the school did you so dirty. And you want to hear something even dirtier, coach? And I was like, nah, why you want to tell me? And he's like, I'm going to tell you regardless. And I was like, don't, please, bro. Nobody cares, bro. It's all gossip. Hashem is watching. In the end, they'll make justice. He said, I just want you to know they still use all your phrases. Keep it classy always. Put your ego. They stole it from you, coach. So I said, nah, let them steal it. What is steal it? It's not me. It's from God. 
and you cannot steal the wisdom from God. It's readily available for everybody. So God bless that they still use Keep It Classy always. Kika always. Cam Kika. We go deeper. You know why? Because we go deep into the mind of Hashem. Like I told you with the sacrifices, yo. There was wine. Why? Because it uplifts man's spirits. There was oil. Why? To signify, to separate yourself from the other nations. Just like oil doesn't mix with any other liquids. So we shouldn't mix with any other nations. And you're going to tell me God's chauvinistic. God is racist, right? Doesn't want us to mix. He doesn't let a woman testify at a trial, you see? This is how the nasty atheists are going to come and talk and right away if you have some knowledge in the Torah. Like I told this guy the other day, I said, don't, don't say that, bro. Don't say he's anti-women. I'm going to show you how he's so pro-women like I was when I did Girls First. I'm going to show you how. I learned from him. What do you think? He doesn't let a woman testify. You know why? Because he knows that the prosecutor, I mean, the defense is going to destroy her. He's going to bring up things from her past and she did this. He's going to bring pictures for her in a club from 10 years ago. Guys to come and testify that she's loose. This is a mother with children, bro. Now you're going to embarrass her and take away her grace and honor publicly? Never. Hashem will block that, bro. He'll block that big time. And it will never happen, you understand? That's why he doesn't let a woman testify at a trial. To protect her honor. Period. Sof sicha. And thank you, Hashem, for teaching us right from wrong. That's what it is, bro. And then you're going to say that he's racist. It's not that he's racist. He knows that if his child mixes with your religion, he's going to lose him. It's not in his interest to lose his children to fake religions that idol worship. You understand? Hashem hates that. He has a diamond in his hand. He's going to go take that diamond and throw it in the middle of the street for everybody to touch it, lick it, spit on it, step on it. And get it dirty? Never. He's never going to do that. He's going to protect that diamond. And one of the ways he protects that diamond is by letting us know do not mix with the other nations, yo. I used to do it when I was younger. Very dangerous, yo. I didn't know any better. And I had to work myself out of that and make an oath to Hashem years ago when I stopped dating Goyot. And I told Hashem, just like Job made a covenant with his eye, that his eye should never look at an immodest woman ever, woman ever. Amen. And I should also make that same oath. Amen. And and I won't make an oath. You know why? Because it's not healthy to make oaths. But what I will say is, dear God, please always program my eyes to know to stay away from even looking at something with a hint of immodesty to purify my eye. You know why? Because when my eye is purified, it purifies my soul because it's a gateway to the soul. Right? Think about it. Your eye has a tube in the back. Where does it go? It goes right into your brain. So everything you see that's negative, it penetrates your eye and spiritually flows right into your brain and sits right there. Dangerous, bro. Yeah, if you do true value, you can destroy the demon that you created. But if not, it'll grow and grow and grow and grow and grow. And it will grow to such a level that you'll forget to know to let it go. And to put your ego low and know that God is running the show. Now that this demon, it's like an ego. Every time you display your ego, your demon of that, that that demon named ego. You have a demon, it's named ego. <laughs> and it keeps growing and growing. And the more you get pompous and smug and rude and arrogant, you're going to keep getting worse and you're not even going to realize it to the point you're going to deny God. To the point that you're going to make fun of God. To the point you're going to disrespect God. Yeah. I'll show you 20,000 Jews right now, bro. That will disrespect God. No problem. That's a problem. You understand? And I hope and pray that these Jews find the truth, man. I really do. I really do. Because I don't want them to suffer. Because I told you, when they suffer, I suffer. You know why? Because when I suffer. When I sin, you suffer. When you sin, I suffer. So why do we make each other suffer? I like saying that like that. You know what I mean? Because I think it really just simplifies everything on a deep, esoteric level to let you know it's in your best interest. 
when you see a Jew going against God and doing the wrong thing, you have an obligation in a classy way to say the right thing and let him know. If he won't accept the message, leave him alone. Right? Of course, because if he's going to get mad, he gets a sin. Now, Ma, you became a stumbling block for his sin? Nah. Leave him alone. Hashem will deal with him. Believe me, Hashem has many angels that he can dispatch to deal with this Jew. Ah, my nation has to get closer. Sinat Chinam. That's why Hashem destroyed the second Beit HaMikdash and it never came back. You know why? Because the Sinat Chinam grew. That's why it never came back. And not only did it not come back, Hashem let the Arabs build a mosque on the Kodesh Kedoshim. Think about how crazy that is. If that's not telling you how upset Hashem is with us, then nothing else will. But always remember Leviticus 26, 44. No matter how upset he is with us, he will never, ever, ever break the covenant that he made with Avram, Isaac, and Jacob. He'll never do it, yo. He says it in the Torah clearly. These Christians could come and read all their verses from Isaiah, try to trick you like these two dirty, 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 God forgive me, I shouldn't even say it, bro. Just dirty Jews, man. I hate to say that, yo. Should never really say that, yo. But this is a Yotem and a cloud, big time. Moti and Eitan from one Torah ministry. These are two Jews that are going to try to convince you that JC is God. Oh my God. <laughs> and they do it in such a sneaky, nasty, snaky way, yo. It's so dirty. All you really would have to do is just tattoo 2644 Leviticus right on their forehead. And that will always remind them to shut their mouth and stop with their nonsense, yo. They're always going to try to show you how God left the Jews and he made a new covenant. It's all lies, bro. All lies. God is going to make a new covenant. And in the new covenant, the thing that he hates the most, idol worshiping, is the first commandment. I'm your God. I have no other gods. He's going to go tell you to have another God that's not only another God. It's a man. Come on, bro, bro, bro. I'm dumb. Can you be? You know why? Baker. They got baited into the sin and they fell heavy. And there's one rabbi that I really love, Rabbi Eitan Baghdadi. And he got mad. He started saying, I don't yell and scream. Because I know that's not the real way of the Torah in the end. I mean, you could yell and scream. Don't get me wrong. If it comes from a pure place that you're crying out because you're hurt. There are two Jews that are disrespecting the name of God. You can bang on the table a little bit. But anyway, in one clip, he banged on the table yelling at them about their nonsense. And how God is going to destroy them to, yo, destroy. And they took that clip of him going like, getting upset. And they made fun of him, bro. So dirty. They exposed them. If they were really nice people like they claimed to be, they would never antagonize a rabbi like that. They would never put a video of him tit for tat to try to like now embarrass him because they felt embarrassed by what the rabbi said. You understand? They're not humble. They're fake. And they're going to get destroyed by God. And you're going to see it with your own two eyes and know that when you want to play with the word of God, don't be careful. Just don't do it. Because I told you, bro, you're going to yell out. Even these Iranians, they got comfortable. Baycar, they got comfortable. Death to Israel, death to Israel. Nothing happens to them. I bet you the first time they said death to Israel, they ducked. Because they were afraid lightning was going to come down from Shamayim. Nah, Baycar, Hashem is going to let you say it 10 billion times. But in the end, you're going to eat it 10 billion times. No body gets away with cursing the nation of Israel ever should always bless Israel even with the lefty government now that just got dissolved thank God you can see Hashem had enough with their nonsense bro they a break and this Netanyahu by, by the way is not any better bro don't ever think that he is this is the guy who did the Gilad, Sh- Gilad Shalit deal bro that'll tell you all you need to know about Netanyahu you understand don't be fooled by these people yo trust me when I tell you Israel needs a leader yo that's going to step up and tell the Israelis to their face. You want peace in Israel? Get stuck to God. That's it. You don't like it? Go home. There's nothing else I can tell you at this point. Man, I wouldn't say it like that because that's not the right way to say it. I would, any leader that would be in charge, man, they, this is how they really have to say it because Hashem will come to you in a dream. And this is what he would tell the next leader. He would say, listen, this is what, he, this is what the Hashem is going to tell the Mashiach right before he dispatches him on his mission. 
He's going to tell him the same thing he told Moshe and the same thing Moshe told Joshua. In order to deal with this nation, it's a stiff necked nation. It's Am Nava Velo Chacham. You're going to have to have tons and tons of patience. Tons of patience. But you know what? There might be an exception because when the Mashiach comes, there's not going to be no time for patience. It's going to have to be a time of action. You understand? So maybe that's not as good as an analogy as I thought it might be originally. We're Moshe Rabbeinu, he said it. Because there's going to be a long time that he thought maybe the time of Mashiach will be, nah, it can't be for more than five, six years, seven years, something like that. So nah, that wouldn't really work. So the Mashiach, it's more about just going to dispatch justice. It's not about doing Kiruv at that point. The Kiruv is done by us. And I guess that's the message that Hashem is saying, that until the Mashiach comes, whoever the leaders are of the Jewish nation, have tons of patience. Know that this is a nation of reversals. They do everything the opposite of God. So how do you deal with them? You just have to be patient with them. You have to let them know that they're on the wrong path. And you know what? If they keep disrespecting God to such a level that you see there's no hope for them, you leave them alone. That's it. You see already, it's getting to the point. It's kind of scary, yo. Because you can see that there's a lot of Jews that are lost. And they're probably never going to come back, yo, unfortunately. I mean, it does say in the prophet Zechariah that Judah will fight against Israel. That it's going to be Jews from, you know, the Jewish nation that are going to assimilate to other countries. And be fighting for those nations. And then when they come to attack Israel, they're going to see how everybody in their army dies in a plague. Eyes spill out. Tongue spills out. You know what I mean? They're going to see things in front of them. They've never seem to know clearly it's the hand of God. And then they're going to do tshuva. So basically what I'm telling you is this is what I'm telling you. With all the mercy that Hashem has for you, there's only going to be one problem. He'll save you. No problem. He's going to save you. But it will be a time of distress for Jacob. It will be only through suffering and pain. You're going to have to see things that are going to like in a holocaust and you survived it's gonna be like that that's what you're gonna have to go through for what for what for what for what for what when all you have to do is be humble be kind be loving be compassionate and be merciful that's it that's all you have to do you'll save yourself from a holocaust if you do those things and respect God and be grateful that's it that's all you have to do I don't understand what's the issue so you're gonna trade that in for getting destroyed I don't understand. Barely being alive. I mean, for what, bro? I don't know, man. Clyde Israel, you got to wake up, man. Listen, you already see what it is, man. Hashem already showed you the blueprint. He punishes. Karma's real. What goes around comes around. You don't keep Shabbat in the end. You shun Shabbat. Shabbat is going to shun you. You're going to see. You're going to have to pay. The angel of Shabbat is going to come in front of you at your trial. And he's going to show Hashem in the Torah. Every law that you broke is going to be right there highlighted, yo. And you're going to have to pay with all the mercy Hashem has. You know why? Because if he lets you get away with it, then he's not a God. Then he's not a real judge. A real judge will never just let you get away with it. There has to be factors that factor in. You did tshuva, you made restitution, you apologized to the family. You know, one thing I love about Hashem is that if a thief gets caught and right away he returns the items... Cannot find him, bro. That's it. He already did tshuva. That's it. That's it. We got the desired result. You got your car back? It doesn't have a scratch on it? All right. So your ego got bruised that your car got stolen. That was Hashem teaching you a lesson. Because when you were a kid, you almost stole a car. So your car almost got stolen. Eat it. Be happy. That's all that happened. But have mercy now on a criminal. Why? I would ever tell you, Cam Kika would ever tell you have mercy on a criminal? Never. I probably have a video that says don't have mercy on a criminal. But you only have mercy on the criminal when? When Hashem does. You know when? When he does tshuva. He told you he gave it back. He stole the car. He drove three blocks. He turned around. He gave it back. I'm going to tell you a true story that actually happened to somebody. He stole a car. And then when he turned on the car, on the radio, it was like some religious channel. And they were talking about what happens to people in Gehenom that steal Yo, 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 he started hearing all these punishments. He got so scared, he turned the car around, put it right back. That's it. What do you think? You think his punishment is what? They're going to send him to jail for five years in Shammai? Never. He did Shuvah, the record was erased. Get it through your head, yo. 
And I want to get back to what I said before. Yes, maybe with the Mashiach, it won't be a message of patience because there's not going to be time for patience. But every other leader prior to that, Hashem would tell them real simple, like He did to Moshe Rabbeinu, be like me, be slow to anger with tons of patience and a doer of kindness. If you do that to the Jewish people, because you know one thing about a Jew that I will say is, and I've seen it with some of these guys at the park that are like atheists, that when you do touch their soul, man, they wake up. They wake up. It's like a dirty diamond, bro. Once you clean that diamond, that's it. That diamond is shiny. And the Jews have that, yo. I must say that, Hashem. I can never deny that. Even when I said earlier, you take 20,000 Jews that make fun of God. Is that so true? But if you can find a way to charismatically teach them the very Torah or something that could touch their heart, they'll wake up. They'll wake up. And one thing I do want to say, man, you have to be very careful. If you have a kid that's a bad kid, don't tell them you're horrible. God is going to destroy you. Don't do that. Because you're going to bring him down when you do that. That's why I told you the greatest form of motivation is encouragement. That's how you do it. And that's the message that Hashem told Moshe Rabbeinu. Because when you encourage the people, you have patience with them. You give them love. And you know what the most beautiful thing is? The real leader of Israel. This next leader that's going to emerge in Israel over the next 20 years is going to be somebody who's going to be simple, meaning humble. He's going to be so about the truth, so about God. He's going to breathe the word of God. And he's going to help the Jews understand that when your enemy wants you dead, you kill them first. And don't have regrets. Don't you dare feel guilty. The opposite. When you destroy the wicked, you get blessed by the kingdom of heaven. Remember that, yo. Pinchas did it. He got blessed. That's it. What more proof do you need? You don't understand, man. Everyone makes it so confusing. Does Hashem have mercy on the wicked? Does Hashem have mercy on the wicked? No. He only has mercy on the wicked when they do tshuva. He only has mercy on the wicked when they have some merit. He only has mercy on the wicked when they want to come back to him. Other than that, there's no mercy. He's feeding the pig, getting ready to destroy him. Baker. Baker baiting him for years. Baiting him for years to go with this Goya. I know a guy like this, yo. One of my friends married to a Goya. To my face, he told me. She's my soulmate. Your soulmate, she's a Goya. How could you be your soulmate? You're not even thinking, bro. Your soulmate. Yeah, God wants you to be with a Goya. Have children that are not Jewish and leave the Jewish nation and destroy your soul. Yeah, that's what your dad wants for you. Yeah, great. Absolutely not. She's not your soulmate. You're tricked. And look, Hashem made it that you can't have kids. Blessed you that you can't have kids. Amen. And may you never have kids. Because when you would have a kid, it would be a bigger punishment for you. And we don't want that. We want to save you, my brother. JS, I love you, man. And I hope and pray, man. There's nobody I know in this world further than God than you. Nobody, man. And I tried to send you my videos. I tried to call you talk. You're not interested. And with love, I left you alone. But no, I'm always here for you, yo. You should know that, yo. Because the day you do call me... And tell me how she cheated on you and broke your heart or called you a dirty Jew. That I'll be there for you. Because you don't understand, man. That's one thing that God does that's so beyond amazing. When he picks a leader to emerge, he makes it that this leader has a spirit in him that the people are attracted to. You understand? Because if Hashem wanted, you could go give the most beautiful speech and nobody will listen. It will never penetrate. It's up to Hashem whether the message penetrates or not. And I'm saying, dear God, please make it that Camp Kika becomes super successful and saving Jews and bringing them back to God to show Jews that it is possible to really love God with a purity of soul so that you know in your heart, like I told you once and I'll tell you twice, put your ego low. Let it go. That means there's going to be a lot of situations where your honor gets shunned or whatever it may be. Here, like I told you, there was some guy here that walked away from me, slammed the door in my face. Did I run after him? Did I said, you're going to listen to what I have to say? Nah. Thank God I had an angel next to me, my mother. She said, you know what? He did you a favor. And I was like, you know what? You're right. You're right. Well, I don't want negativity. That's stuck to negativity. I'm going to go run after him and demand that he answers my question. Nah. 
let him go. Let him go. And when he goes, you let it go. <laughs> Put your ego low, man. What advice I could give you about putting your ego low, man. It will save you from a tragedy. Save you from death. For real. It'll give you life, man. Being humble. There was a kid in my old neighborhood. I'm going to name him. Kiki Thomas. That was his name. Yo, this kid did not talk. He was super quiet and humble. And I lived in a tough neighborhood with a lot of dudes, like, with a lot of crime. And I'm telling you, this dude got respect from everybody. Real talk. We're like, the biggest gangsters in my neighborhood would look out for Kiki. Why? Because he was humble. That's why. Men recognize a truly humble individual. And even the biggest gangster knows how hard it is because he struggles with it, right? He's got a big ego and he knows he doesn't have control. And he's smart enough to see that a humble person does have control. Because like I told my friend Dave, if you're truly humble, you must fear God. The foundation of wisdom is to fear God. How are you going to be humble if you don't have wisdom? Being humble is the ultimate wisdom. It means that you know God is running everything. He's the creator to the world. You live and die on his word. Dear God, I just want to thank you on behalf of the nation of Israel for every miracle you did for us from the moment of inception to this second and beyond. I know who you are, Hashem. And I know you're holding me right now, close to you, hugging me, and telling me you love me. And I know you feel like that with a lot of your children. There's some that you unfortunately, you know, that you're going to turn your face on them. Why? Because they turn their face on you. You understand? It's amazing. When Yosef was sold as a sex slave, think about it, bro. He was sold to the Arabs and then to the Ishmaelites. Or to the Egyptians. I forgot exactly how it went down. But basically they sold him and then he got sold again. And when he got sold again, it was like as a sex slave. And when he was in the caravan, they usually carry oil. This time they were carrying beautiful fragrances. Why? Because Hashem was telling Yosef, no matter how bad the situation looks, I'm with you. Even in the Torah, when Hashem says, I'm going to destroy my people for leaving my covenant, he still calls them my daughter. (laughs) He still calls us his daughter, even when he's enunciating the curse that he's going to put on us. For the disrespect we showed him. Meaning he's never going to leave us, yo. He's never going to forsake his children. He's never going to leave you, yo. Never. The only way he's going to leave you is when you choose to leave him. He's not going to chase after you. You understand? He's not going to chase after you. That's why it says you leave me one day, I leave you two. Now you're going to get up and say, oh, where's the mercy of God? You think he's getting revenge? No, it's the reality. If you and God are standing next to each other and Hashem moves a mile to the right and you move a mile to the left, you're two miles apart. What are you talking about, bro? Hashem is constantly ascending. And now when you leave him, you descend. Don't descend too far. Because if you descend too far, you might be in the depths of Gehenom, burned by a fire. Much, much, I want to say 60 times, but I think it's more than that. Stronger than the fire you see in this world. I love you, Hashem. And I want to thank you for all the knowledge you give me. Every day I sit and study Torah, I increase my knowledge. I increase my connection to you. I increase my ability to save another Jew. If you're a real listener to Cam Kika, and I mean like a real one, you know what I mean? Like you really know, by now you really know me. I got 381 videos. You get to know me real well by now. If you're a real listener, I love you, bro. I appreciate it. It's people like you that keep making me do this video. 30 views, 25 views. Some of them get 12 views. No problem. Save one Jew, it's like you saved the whole world. I put it out there with love, yo. And I know one day... Hashem is going to broadcast it the way it needs to be broadcasted. And I appreciate that, Akadosh Baruch in advance. Just like you help us in advance, I'm already thanking you in advance. Selah, always.
before I let you go, I want to let you know that God loves you. I want to let you know that God is watching over your situation. I want to let you know that God sees all the pain that you're going through. And I want to let you know that even though right now it looks hopeless, it looks helpless, it looks horrible, that there is light at the end of the tunnel. It can't rain forever. Even in the middle of the punishment, change. And Hashem will alleviate the pain. When Hashem has a decree sent to a nation, even after the decree is sealed, He did it with the nation of Israel because of His love for us. But when the, when the decree is on the way, they can still change it. Then they did it. But we're talking about here where God already decreed a famine for the Jews. And they were dying. And Hashem came to the prophet, if I'm not mistaken, it was Jeremiah, and told him, tell the people that if they change now, now, in the middle of the famine, now, the decree was already sent, that I will make an exception to the rule and save them. And the Jews said, no, thank you. So Hashem destroyed them. Ay, Hashem, 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 I know your children are very, very clever. And sometimes when you're very, very clever, the Satan can use that cleverness against you. And he fooled a lot of your children. One thing I will say, any Jew, as dirty as he could get, and unfortunately for a Jew, it can get real dirty. Because when you have the ability to be super duper holy, you also have the ability to be super duper dirty. Any Jew that disrespects God, I will defend your honor against Hashem always, and you know that. But if that same Jew apologizes or shows even a bit of remorse, I will hug him and tell him I love him. And I will hold his hand and I will lead him to your holy temple to partake in your feast and in the glory of your might. My mother said something so beautiful the other day. She said, God has the best view. Because he watches from heaven, he sees everything. And when you study the Torah, you'll also have the best view. Because you'll see everything in front of you. Like, for example, the nation of Israel is heading towards a catastrophe. Towards a disaster. Towards a tragedy. You know how I know? Because when you leave God and you do whatever you want to do. Hashem, unfortunately, is going to give you all the time you need. Bake car. And in the end, the smack will come. Have mercy on us, HaKadosh Baruch Hu. I'm going to Israel soon, and I'll spread this word all over. I will not be afraid. I will not hesitate to go up to a Jew and tell them, Yo, I love you. God loves you. And let me teach you about his word. And I will be successful on one condition. And that's if I'm backed by the word of God. Love you, Hashem.